educating children and teens about having ADHD. I have parents and teachers who talk to me and say, I don't want him to know about this. Teachers will say, we don't want to label him or her because we don't want them to feel bad about themselves. But guess what? They already feel bad about themselves. They know that something is a problem. And so we have to help them understand what they have and help them learn to take care of it. And um, I just want to make this point at the beginning. Having ADHD does not mean being ADHD. These kids are a person first. They're a person first, and they happen to have ADHD. Too often, because of a lot of the negative things that happen, we find ourselves, and I did this myself with my son, I tried to fix him all the time. And he didn't help his self-esteem at all. I was trying to make him be what I wanted him to be, and until I learned that, hey, he has a disability here, and we don't have to fix everything. Let's look at what his strengths are and help him be able to have good outcomes in life, be successful at what he's doing. So um, I'm going to say here, and I'll just very quickly tell you that I'm comparing this to having diabetes because I am a diabetic and I have been for many years. When I first got diabetes, my, there weren't a lot of education classes out there about uh, for diabetics. My father was a doctor and he helped, uh, he, he sent me to people to get me educated to learn about the disorder. How insulin worked, how food worked, how they worked together. Because he knew there were lots of bad complications that could happen if I don't, didn't take care of myself. And I've been able to make it for a lot of years here. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but it's been a long time. And so far, so good with no complications. So uh, I learned to manage my diabetes so I'm in charge of it instead of it being in charge of me because it can control your life. So think about who might be in control. Is the ADHD in control? Or are you working with your child or uh, the, your child as a parent or children in the classroom to help them be in control of their ADHD so they can be on top of it, understand what they have, and learn how to manage it. With some children, it's harder to do this than others, but you need to find as many ways as you can to help educate them. And I have... Um, I'm going to very quickly tell you it is important to educate them. It's often more effective than counseling. And talking about ADHD once is not enough. They need to understand what it is. And there are, um, I've given you a resource list, and of course they're all in English, um, but uh, it, those books, are, a lot of them are available at Amazon. Uh, dot com, and we want to help these. Ch well, I was, forgot to say the last part here. I want uh, there are books for little children to help them understand, uh, like um, putting on the brakes is one that is very good. It helps them learn about what ADHD is, so you can have a conversation with them about it, because they need to understand it and not use it as an excuse. And I'm, I'm going to hurry with that. Here's this uh, uh, cartoon. I told the principal that I couldn't go to detention because I have attention deficit disorder, and he bought it. Uh, ADHD is not an excuse for anything. It's a reason for doing things differently. We don't want children to use it as an excuse. Um, OK? Do I get to go until 3 or 2.50? which it already is.
uh, enough to ten. Uh, two. Yeah. Okay, yeah. two. Okay, yeah. so, I can. I can. So you have that. about fifteen minutes. Okay. Uh, so the strategies and coping skills need to be taught to your child, and I'm going to give you some ways to do that, because your child needs to learn how to do, take charge of his or her ADHD. These are common challenges that the kids have. And I hope you've learned some of these in the last few days. You probably know them already from being in the classroom or being at home and watching these things happen. But they have difficulty with these things. They're inherent with a lot of people who have ADHD. And so we got to teach them skills to deal with each one of these. So here are some suggested coping skills for children at different stages of development. For hyperactivity, the ages of five through eight. And uh, teachers, I want you to be sure that in the classroom you can help educate these children along with the parent and be a team with them and help them uh, understand these behaviors. Become aware of and learn what physical outlets for excessive energy are legitimate in different settings. If a kid can't hold still, and I have a grandson who can't. He's 14 now. When he was three and four, he was at my house bouncing on everything. At my house, you do not jump on my furniture. So where is he going to jump? Well, being the wonderful grandmother that I am, uh, and the fact that I do work with attention deficit disorder all the time, I thought I better figure out something. So we have a little mini trampoline, and I got that out, but that wasn't enough for him just to bounce up and down on that. He needed to go here to here. So we set up a bouncing course. And uh, the places that he could legally bounce to, I have a bench he could go to and then another, several other places. Pretty soon I had all the grandkids doing it, which was fine. But it gave him an outlet for that energy. When you're in the classroom, give them some legal outlets. Let them stand if they need to. Let them, ask them what would help them with that hyperactivity. When they're uh, a little older, uh, teach them to advocate appropriately before you're going to help them become aware. And I'm not going to have time to go over every one of these in detail. But uh, as they get older on hyperactivity, they need to learn to identify the cues of wh what makes them feel like their body's going 100 miles an hour inside. Uh, are there some triggers for that more than others, like sitting here all day long? Does this drive you crazy if you have ADHD? You need to be able to move. So identify what those cues are, and you still should come, but you need to identify what an outlet would be to uh, help with that. And then kids 18 and above, ideas for them. Uh, they should by then be understanding what uh, the disorder does and what those strategies are that will help them manage this. Impulsivity, uh, learn to stop, think, and act. Learn to self-report incidents. Help them talk about these things. Some of these kids won't talk very well. My son did not like to talk uh, about things. If I started doing an inquisition or a inquiring, being nosy, um, I had to be very careful how I did it because then he started thinking that I was trying to fix him, which I was, but you need to disguise it. Uh, check over own work for mistakes in school. These kids often impulsively do their worksheets just as fast as they can without even reading the words. 14 and above, discuss social and personal consequences of impulsive behavior. Learn how to channel impulsive energy through use of meditation and sports. Now, I don't have time to read all of these to you, but uh, please look at some of the ideas that you might need to have help with. 
with attention and uh, distractibility, what are some things that you can do with your child or a child in your classroom who, to help this child learn about what he's got and take care of it? Okay, I'm going to move on to forget forgetfulness. This one, uh, have them learn to create key words and create a reminder list. Learn to use calendars. They need to do that because they can't remember things. They need to have something that works for them. Now, my grandsons have graduated onto, I've got four grandsons uh, who are teenagers who, who have ADHD, and they each have their own um, personal daily planner. What do you call them? I can't think. But one has a, a, a phone with planning and organization in it. Whatever will work for these children, they need to learn how to do this. And then you can't just tell them. One of the, uh, on my, uh, one grandson, when he was a sophomore in high school, he had a plan at school that said, Logan will find a planner that will, organizational planner that will work for him and use it. Right. Not going to happen. Somebody had to teach him how to use it before he would be responsible enough to be able to use it. You've got to teach him. Okay, um, teach them how to do lists and schedules and so on. Okay, disorganization, help them learn these organizational skills. If you don't do that and if you're always doing it for them, mom and dad, which I was really, I was good at that, I was helping provide the structure for my son, but can your child eventually, you've got to wean them off of you. You don't want them living at your house forever. You want them to be able to have some skills to be able to be an adult. And uh, so teach them how. Teach them skills. Or, okay, time management's the next one. Got to finish here. Um, Teach them to understand what time is and how time is passing. Help them do that. There are lots of ways that you can. What your child should know about ADHD. All right. Here are ideas of what you can do to help them in talking with them about it. So maybe there's somebody else in your family who has it. And you can share those characteristics. Maybe dad has it, maybe mom has it, and they can talk with them. And uh, sometimes mom and dad can have it, and they haven't accepted that they have it yet, uh, but eventually will. Or maybe, maybe Uncle John has it. There are a lot of, you're just going to have to think about what would work for your family. And if you're a teacher in the classroom, work with the families to help him or her be able to understand what some of the behaviors are that are causing him a problem at home or at school, I mean at school, and uh, help them be able to understand it. Don't be mean to them. My grandson hates school. One of them hates school because the teachers don't understand him. And they're always mean to me. That's what he said when my daughter, I have a questionnaire my daughter asked him questions and he gave answers because we were having a very difficult time with him in school. He didn't want to do anything for the teachers. He just wanted to read a book and get away. And he said, if the teachers would understand me and help me, I would like school. There are different ages here, information about what you can do to talk with them uh, about these things at different ages also. The first were coping strategies, and these are things that your child should know. Okay, and I'm going to have to just show you that they're there. That's what I'm doing. You're certainly not being able to read them. One point I do want to make here when the kids, what age do your kids get to drive at what age? What age can they get a driver's license? 18? Good for you. Our kids can get them at 16. 
Uh, I would like it to be 30. <laughs> but uh, because they are, remember, they have a developmental lag of several years. Two to four years it scares you, scares me a lot. My son is 32, and I finally feel safe driving in a car with him. He has a wife and children, and uh, he's a paramedic, but he still drives fast. He still has to have the radio on, and he's tuning it all the time, and is in, you know, he needs to be on his meds when, he, when he's driving a car. Okay, um, here are handouts for you. And it's one big handout, but you've got information where parents can learn more, where children can learn more, where teens can learn more, and teachers on the where parents can learn more list. There are several books that are very good for teachers to help you know what to do in the classroom. One of them is Chris Dendy's book, Teaching Teens with ADHD. She is presenting at the conference. And another one is a book by Sandra Reif. R-I-E-F, and hers is called the ADHD Book of Lists. You don't have to read the whole book. You have a behavior, you look at it, say, hmm, here are a whole bunch of bullets of things, bulleted list of things that we could do to tr address this behavior. It's got a lot of good information. I don't think it's in Arabic, however. All right, the end, and I'm sorry to have to do it so fast. Thank you very much. For, and I hope, I hope you got something out of these and will, it will help make a few changes in your life.